you're getting the amino acids, you're getting that DNA. That's the nanotechnology of an independent life being. That's its resonant frequency in the DNA in that. So that when you get your make your own um, RNA um, amino acids in this process, and then you cover the coil or in it as well as put it in the material that you're spinning, it then is putting out your resonant frequency with those plasma fields. And their claim is that from that, you can then harness the energy from your own cells and the amount of eating and stuff goes down by about 90%, they say, and you're just pulling energy, life force, literally out of this plasma field. Hello amazing beings, Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel, back for another Autodidactic Chat. And tonight something pretty cool, something special, we've got Bernard Konkin on. And Bernard uh, is researching alchemy basically. He's getting in and he's doing a lot of hands-on experiments. Uh, he's discovered quite a few things and he's He's even uh, formulating his own theories and uh, attempting to rewrite the way that we look at you know, chemistry and energy and all these different things because clearly we know that you know, this, this tech, uh, what we knew in the past was a lot better and more efficient than what we've got now as far as, well, as, far as everything, you know, free energy, um, but also some other applications uh, to do with health that you may not have heard of uh, to do with alchemy. And do remember, uh, guys, all the links will be in the description below. So go across, check out Bernard's work, because like I said, he's doing really good stuff here. He's uh, really getting in there, doing the hands-on experiments, uh, finding some amazing stuff. So get over there, you know, support the people that are out there doing the, you know, the hard work um, and helping us push through this and, and build the new world, you know, that we all want so much. So. Share his work, like, leave him a comment, and subscribe. And now, let's jump into it. Have you heard of the guy, um, oh, what's his name, Ap Apophysis something? Oh, Theory Apophysis. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Ken Wheeler. Ken Wheeler. Yeah. Someone told me, I haven't seen it, someone told me he froze a, a magnet in a glass of water. Okay, take a look at our perfect geometric egg-shaped void here. Now the magnet was hanging lower than this, so it's off now because when I yanked it out, the string that it's attached to yanked the magnet up. But you can see our perfect geometric void with our perfect 42.5 degree centrifugal baseline and our centripetal, they call it a bucking formation in the frozen water right here at the center but at the bottom we have perfect 42.5 degree processional divergent centrifugal freeze lines but most importantly look at the center void here perfect not close not kinda close absolutely perfect geometric egg shaped void now this is how nature, quote unquote, sees magnetism. And yeah, yeah, that's one of his experiments. Uh, I've actually done very similar things with uh, the Keshi Gans for years. That's bizarre. I'm going to have to try. I've got some neodymiums. I'm going to try that with some neodymiums. Yeah, Ken's a great guy. So what I'm going to set up is how to make colloidal silver zinc top water. And it's basically one of Keshi's uh, main things. So colloidal zinc, though? Yeah, colloidal oh. zinc, silver, and copper. Oh, okay. Well, all, all, all together? Yeah. Wow. And so does that, I mean, it must, like, affect your, your energy field because they're all essentially metals. Yeah, and so... What I've discovered is that it all turns into a monoatomic um, plasma state of metal elements. So, and mon monoatomic is basically um, an atom in single atom. 
Your single atom in gas form, is that right? Or it just means single atom? So it's mono- plasma form is the thing. Plasma. So it's, it's metal elements in their plasma state. And they exist as a single atom solid. And it's this is your superconductive material. This is the monoatomic gold of the ancients. But this is also the superconductive nanotechnology of our future and of the present. And right. um, gases in their plasma state, they're ionized, right? And they put off light and whatnot, where these metals, they turn into this pure white powder or in this monoatomic, but it's when you put in a current or when you rotate them really fast, that's when they activate and they have these quantum superconductive over unity principles. Right. And that they also are electromagnetic, but they shed their solid metal properties and they gain these new plasma element properties. Okay. And that's where they also um, get uh, like the weight loss that's sometimes measured in them and whatnot. So it's almost as if they're quantum entangled in this plasma higher dimensional state and part mm. of the particles exist elsewhere and they're bringing energy in from this vacuum, from the ether, the higher dimensional states. And that's how you get the over unity. It's not creating energy out of nowhere. It's bringing it in from a higher plasma dimension. Okay, because I did a video yesterday on radium, which is the same kind of thing. I saw that this morning. Oh, you saw it? Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, So yeah, same, same principle. Um, It's like when they talk about it, they say it's got this heat source and a light source, but they don't know where it comes from. It's, it's bringing something in from, from somewhere else. Yeah, exactly, right? It's this plasma sort of state that's doing it. I don't know if you can really see it in there, but how it's all red and shiny on that coil. On the left? Yeah, this one right here. Yep. So that's is what the old alchemist calls the mer- mercular state. Right before it gets to the white monatomic state, it gets to this crystalline pinky state. And it theorized that it's part mercury. And I'm working, uh, I just got in contact with some guys down in the States that are gonna test it for me to see if there is the transmutation of mercury happening in it. Wow, so literally, changing um form atomic form exactly wow. and uh there's so there's the alchemists say that the mercury state and the sulfur state and i in these experiments i collect a lot of this red stuff that looks like the red mercury that could be a mercury compound that would mean it transmutates out of nowhere and all metals turn into it as well as uh, when the reaction's live, if you cut it off and kill part of it, everything turns yellow, and that's what they call the sulfur state. And literally all the monoatomic material, all material at once turns into this yellow colored state, which could should be sulfur, which would prove transmutation of sp- spontaneous sulfur in it. Wow, okay, which... <laughs> makes me think of Sodom and Gomorrah, but um, so with alchemy, obviously alchemy is, that's where we get the word chemistry, our chemical, chemical, chemistry. Um, and, and we're taught that it, that it was trying to turn lead into gold. That's what they pretty much, the narrative they want you to think. But what you're talking about, it seems that that, that actually may be closer than, than we think, you know, as far as transmuting things and also maybe just t- turning lead and gold into different, more usable forms rather than actually oh, get, finding I, lead and turning it into gold. Too. And I actually have a whole thesis on how to do it. And um, I, I'm putting together like a, a few presentations explaining everything and whatnot. But uh, I recommend watching my videos with uh, Rex so far on Leak Project where I've given the gist of it over oh, have you done hour interviews with them. Have you done an interview with Rex Bear, have you? Oh, I've done three now. And, oh, uh, okay. I haven't seen them. We've got a fourth one coming up. 
Oh, okay, cool. I'll definitely check them out. I'll put a link in uh, the, below as well in the description. So we can check that out. So, and this is the thing about gold. It's gold's more, uh, I guess, valuable as far as when it's in our body, right? Um, rather than used as a, as a form of trade. Right. Oh, absolutely. So, so this is again how, how they kind of change the narrative, and they make it. Oh no, it's all about gaining wealth when it was really about gaining health. You got it, my friend. How does that look? Just pretty much, it's just illuminating the jar. I can see the two bits at the top of it. Are they anode and cathode, are they, or...? Yeah, they're going to be the anode and cathode. So what's on the left? So on the right there, you're this making... This one is just copper and copper to Keshi coils. Okay. And then this one is zinc, a nano-coated copper coil, and a silver, uh, silver kind, silver leaf. And so basically just attach a small current and they'll just bubble away and, and let off monatomic particles. Exactly. Turning it into plasma material, which it's also creates um, deuterium. It, it is called fusion. And the more current you add in, the uh, more cold fusion nuclear reactions you can attain. And my theory is, is that the resonant frequency of any element, you put that in as the voltage, you'll be able to then transmute it into that as the atomic hydrogen bonds with the metals in their pink transmutation state that uh, the alchemists talk of in the past. Okay, <laughs> so... What did you say you put in there? If you put in... Um... So I put zinc as the anode with the positive going in to yep. the salt water. Yep. And then it is nano-coated copper. So just copper where you've broken down the outer shell to there's only one covalent bond in it, which then makes it able to activate with and interact with the monoatomic or the plasma state material. Okay. Is that something you buy? Uh, you can do it with a blowtorch or you can do it with oh, plastic. Okay. It, it's a uh, cashy technology. All right, cool. It's all very low tech technology, really, isn't it? Because it is. It's so is... low tech, yet at the same time, so high tech. It's yeah. Cool. They try and teach us that high tech is this, you know, all these circuit boards and that. And they also want us to think that this stuff is so hard and difficult. You know, you've got to go to university for six years before you can. You know, put a cathode and an anode in a jar of water or something. But, but when you look into it, it's not that. You know, I've been looking a bit into electricity, and um, it's not it's not very complex really, especially when you look into how they make it and stuff. It's, you know, no, this thing that right? it's it's a giant scam. It is, and that's uh, why they don't want us looking because we'll find out that it's a scam and we can just make our own for free. Uh, Jared Morin is a very good source of information on electricity. Jared Morin? Yeah, Gerard Morin. Gerard Morin, okay. But there, there's a lot, I've actually been watching a bit of stuff from the 70s. Um, you know, it's amazing what they used to put on TV. Like there, we had a guy in Australia called Professor Sumder Miller. This old real crazy scientist looking dude, you know, with the hair and everything. Um, but, you know, he's got tons of videos and they just show you how to do everything and how basic all this stuff really is but um that all got thrown out and it all got made you know the realm of oh you can't touch that unless you've got a degree or unless you've got your your trade or you know it's just it's just such a scam isn't it like it's literally they just go to the point that we to stop us looking because they know that if we do look we'll just see instantly how big, how big a scam it is I feel you, my friends. It, like, it, it's the biggest scam ever made. And they're just continuing it day by day. So with free energy, do you think they're still harvesting through, through their buildings, free energy? 
there's something going on or a higher dimensional energy through the cathedrals. There's just so, there's something to it. I'm just wondering if they're still getting, you know, electric voltage and just selling it to us and telling that they're getting it through all these power plants, but they're really know. not. I think that they've honestly destroyed the knowledge so much that the average okay. person, even in the elite, doesn't understand or doesn't remember or, or get yeah, it. Yeah, right. I mean, it just takes a minute to get going, but it will get there. And I attached a AC current to it now, just a phone charger. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So that's I, I, that's 12, is it? Sorry? How many volts is that? Uh, just a, like a standard <laughs> micro USB charger. Yeah, right. I th I'm just wondering if they're 12 or, or 20 or 240. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's 12, 12. It's 12, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just like literally the same as clipping it onto um, a, nine, a 9 or 12 volt battery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not, not much difference than so having it. Just very low voltage, yeah. Which is the kind of voltage that you could get off these, um, you know, like Leyden jars and and what we, what they call the Baghdad batteries and stuff, isn't it? That, that's exactly what I was going to bring up. Is that I am pretty sure Keshi's technology of uh, his jars are the Baghdad battery. Yeah, right. I, 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 yeah, I haven't looked into Keshi for a couple of years. I've, I've been following him and doing his research. Uh, for nine years now, and I, I never joined the society, but I still participate pretty much on a weekly basis in the uh, live streams. And it, what he calls GANS is this monoatomic material, and, and it's what Sir Isaac Newton calls a molecular white matter that you can break all metal elements down to. So Keshi calls it GANS, gas, atom, nano, solid state. Um, David Hudson calls it ORMIS for orbitally rearranged electron molecule. Yep. And it, it's all different acronyms for the exact same thing of a single atom, solid metal particle in a plasma state. And, and this is something that's really not, definitely not talked about, but they don't even really say that you can do this, do they? Like as far as the mainstream, um, they don't teach that you can change metals into, into powder, basically, do they, into monoatomic elements? The, the very, it's, it's cutting edge technology, really. And it's that the ones that do know about it either have non-disclosure contracts and are working in private research or just nobody knows or it's independents like Keshi who are called Quats. Like, and whatnot and yeah. everything else. But it's that there's no unified theory of it so that it's vastly misunderstood, but it's really so simple of just being the pla a plasma state element. And so what are the benefits like of this kind of technology? Is it, is it mainly for consumption and health or is there other stuff that all ties into this kind of model? So with, the, with what we're making there, the zinc, silver, copper, once you wash it out and you turn it into, uh, you get all the salt out of it, you flush it. I flush it nine times before I start drinking it and it's in the bottom here, and then you just drink the top part of the water, which is your structured water. And that's for your health benefits. Um, with different metals like bismuth and iron and whatnot, they're you can get the white, but they're usually different colors for the heavier metals. And I don't mess around with them because it is literal fusion that you're dealing with that you can get radioactivity and some decay when you work with the uh, bigger metals so i don't recommend doing that at all but um with those it's like for gardening agriculture you can charge the water with those minerals and then water your um 
crops with and they've found that they they're getting about three times the yield and as well as three times the length of uh, once you harvest it for it to remain like fresh and whatnot oh wow wow and then also they're doing uh the experiments where if you rotate the monatomic matter at several thousand rpm it actually starts emitting a physical plasma field that you can interact with. And that's where you get your anti-gravity technologies, your over-unity technologies, and all sorts of... Also, they say um, that... So on that electrolysis, when you put your human DNA, like your sweat, your skin particle, blood, anything into it, it automatically starts reproducing your DNA, your uh, RNA, your amino acids on the cathode. And it's this white, it starts bubbling up in this white amino acids. And that's where the alchemy of the past of the medicines of getting the oil out of a plant, right? You're getting the amino acids, you're getting that DNA. That's the nanotechnology of an independent life being. That's its resonant frequency in the DNA in that. So that when you get your, make your own um, RNA um, amino acids in this process, and then you cover the coil or in it as well as put it in the material that you're spinning. It then is putting out your resonant frequency with those plasma fields. And their claim is that from that, you can then harness the energy from your own cells and the amount of eating and stuff goes down by about 90%, they say, and you're just pulling energy, life force, literally out of this plasma field. Wow. And that's literally just by drinking structured water. and As well as when, once you have, you get a minor effect by drinking the structured water, but then you get exponentially more by making these coils and then uh, running uh, plasma electricity through the coils, the Magrav coils through it, the Keshi technology. And, and what, so do you just need to be in proximity to those? To, uh, how do they? Exactly. Yeah, okay. um, an another um, coil technology very similar is by Daniel Nunes and the uh, Nuna, Daniel Nunes YouTube channel and their POE coil vortex coil it's based off of the rodent coil but more advanced and they've shown that growing plants uh within certain proximities of these coils while they have energy going through them even with no light the plants grow exponentially more and they grow towards the coil where literally it's all shaped to the coil wow so i'm just thinking like we see all these pictures of you know tribal people and people in the old world they always wore things on their arms and a lot of them look like snakes um like a coil right oh exactly yeah so do you think that like the whole what we call jewelry but you know the sort of because it, it all seemed to be copper and gold and silver <laughs> is, is that part of this huge, tech? huge to that and also if you look over to like um the old Cambodians and whatnot, right before World War I, and they have the different domes and whatnot. It's all capacitors. It's all electrical capacitors. So they're getting some sort of energy in from that, as well as static electricity. Like, it's all charge coming in. So there's definitely some sort of energy transfer technology with those jewelry. Also, even think of, like, the crown on your head. You have the giant gold coil that you're broadcasting your aura out of like that would not exponentially increase your aura or your energy in energy out along with the resonating gems mm. yeah i mean this is the thing i mean we're just looking at it all wrong because because a lot of what you're saying is it's energy coming from uh, outside of this realm, shall we say, or from a different frequency or whatever. And that's, of exactly, course, something a different that, plane. Yeah. And so we're not supposed to think or know that that even exists, are we? Like there's nothing outside of of here. So so that that sort of shuts off all that tech and it's all quackery. <laughs> that's, that's what they try to have us believe, yet they're the ones wearing it and valuing it the most, right? Mm. 
So those jars, the stuff on the top is monotonic powder. So is that that's good for, for health? Yeah. The monotonic or the plasma state, copper, zinc, silver, as well as my own amino acids because I was using my hands when I was putting it in. So my, my sweat, and my cells and skin got in there. So around the cathode, especially it bubbles up the white flakes, which is then the technology that that amino acid mixed with the plasma state metals uh, creates the frequency of this plasma energy uh, resonating with my own DNA and my own molecular cells. So you can heal on a molecular or DNA level. Exactly. And it's, as Maron Keshi says, it's a field interaction of energy between your cells and the plasma energy. Mm. And it just puts you more back in balance with the resonant frequencies of nature. And when I first started watching the Keshi Foundation, like I seen the this one guy, he was in a wheelchair, he couldn't walk, he was almost completely bald. And within eight months of him making the coils properly and drinking the plasma water properly, this guy was walking around with a full set of hair. Like it, it blows my mind the potential of this. Like it, it truly is, uh, as Keshi calls it, the cup of life, but it's like the, um, uh, from the ancient times, the fountain of youth. Yeah, exactly. The fountain of youth, the sh the chalice there. The but yeah, yeah, the uh, <laughs> what is that called? The goblet of Christ. The yeah, that one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, the Holy Grail. There we go. Holy Grail. You got it. That's yes. the one. Yes. And, and and it's as simple as it, it literally looks. It could be the Baghdad battery. It essentially, is the mm. Baghdad battery. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. And they're just telling it, no, it was just to, um, what do they say, put layers of silver and gold on things, you know, electrolysis, but uh, could have been that they were healing stations. Because this is the thing, um, everyone can do this in their house, right? And it, for, for a very low cost. Exactly, right? And, 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 it, and it's um, $10 worth of stuff, and you're doing it in your garage. and who knows, it's the potential of a demigod technology for, for all it, we know. And it's not specific, basically. So you can have any ailment um, and use that stuff and it'll it'll fix whatever, won't it? Because it goes down to, you know, it starts from the base level, fixing the the foundation, you know, as we like to say. The level, exactly, right? Mm. And it apparently drains the energy out of viruses. It's... Um, drains the negative energy out of cancer cells and puts them back into being a harmonious natural cell. Like it, it's a cure all of everything. And even NASA has colloidal silver, which on its uh, copyright patents for what they use in space, colloidal silver, which is just the water of this monoatomic silver, not even including copper, zinc, or gold, just the silver, right? Like, mm. That's the thing, yeah. Most people have heard of colloidal silver and they know it's something to do with health. Not many people know why it's good or how it works or anything, but it sounds like that's silver, water down as well. Yeah, and colloidal silver, usually it's 8 to 21 parts per million of the silver within the water. And it's like this monoatomic plasma is a million parts per million. <laughs> wow right there you can grasp the sort of effects of like exponentially more mm. uh, beneficial and powerful definitely so plasma itself is that that is that what they call an unstable element like as far as um... no, plasma is the fourth state of all matter so it goes yep. gas liquid solid plasma asthma because i mean this is the thing like um just for everyone listening like what is plasma? Because it seems to be a, a state that um, is oscillating between two different states. Is that right? Like it, it's sort of. Exactly. It's connected to a, another higher dimension, right? So it's almost and, like a portal. And I'll give you another example of plasma right here with one of these guys. Hey. And your fluorescent bulb of there's your plasma. This is the ionized gas. So that is a gas in a plasma state. Yeah. Where 
the metals, they just turn into this monoatomic material. And, and of course, that light bulb just, that wasn't connected at all. Right, yeah, exactly. So we want to talk free energy or of the ancients of how if they had plasma technology, you could have things lighting up anywhere, mm. wireless, like. So, so that just looking at that, I mean, and, and the shape of your tube, I mean, do you think that's the kind of stuff that they may have had in domes? Absolutely. I fully believe that. And all you need is like a, a glass container that's fully sealed with some sort of gas in it and you get like, look at this light still in the box and yeah. oh, lightning in a jar. I mean, that's what that's almost as dead is a saying, isn't it? Catch lightning in a jar. Big, and you've done it. <laughs> it's a, a Van de Graaff, Van de Graaff yeah. the, the Tesla coil inside of it that then creates the ionizes the gas within the sealed uh, plasma tube or dome. And is that more just for visuals? Because if, um, well, Van de Graaffs are, are static, aren't they? That they, they give off static. Yeah, but they okay. create that plasma field of energy that if you have a tube with any gas in it, it ionizes it and you get that light and the wireless okay. uh, transmission of energy. But you normally just don't see it like, I mean, obviously with the, the cheap ones where you put your fingers, but the original Van de Graaffs, they seem to have all been like metal balls, don't they? Like, yeah. Oh, and, and that's a whole nother level of DC electricity that we've been wiped out the knowledge and the technology that uh, once again, I recommend uh, Daniel Nunes channel for their experiments with connecting um, resonant or frequencies with uh, dome metal domed balls and transferring wireless electricity and other plasma experiments that they're doing as oh. well as the plasma channel that guy is doing some pretty good work as well yeah i saw i actually saw one of his videos yesterday where he made this huge van de graaff like yeah the, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I saw that yesterday uh, as well god he, he gets so excited doesn't he <laughs> uh it's for, for us nerds right it's i love it i love it <laughs> he's right yeah it's hip to be square man um so just another question, um, I forgot what you said before, but you alluded to sort of um, cymatics and so is this, is this sort of technology and, and stuff, is it tied in with cymatics and? Um... Absolutely it is. The electrolysis, the cold fusion aspect of the electrolysis and the alchemical process of once you have the metal in the crystalline state in the electrolysis reaction, that if you put in the resonant frequency of those elements, it will then, uh, with the atomic hydrogen being made in the electrolysis, bond into the metal and transmutate into the full solid new metal that you're putting those resonant frequencies in. And, and so are those molecules, are they um, like sacred ge geometric shapes? Yes, so that's a whole other lesson and lecture that I'm going to be doing. And, and it has to do with dimensional <laughs> geometry uh, and the planes and that um, like the platonic solids are your heavier, denser, uh, like five, six, seven, eight and up um, dimensions. And it's so it starts with the first dimension being your flat disk. That's where you get the flat earth. If you're measuring from the dimensional plane of time, the second dimension is, and so the first is electron, your light, your single gas light takes form and shape in gas in your first dimension. Yep. Uh, number awesome. two is magnetism. And it's a pole rod of two polar opposite fields that are then connecting the two planes of your electronic disks of so the polarized rod space between your two disks. Your third dimension is your sphere, which is the 3D ball spherical rounds. Um, and then your fourth is the cube, or sorry, the tetrahedron, and yeah. then the cube, and then up and up and up. 
and uh, I'm, it's still a work in process, but I've basically been rewriting a whole level of uh, theory of relativity. And that, for instance, your 4D can be that, but then there's also the time planes are like a page in a book where it's infinitely long, but infinitely thin. And all your information is written on that page in that one moment of time. And as time goes on, it's like flipping the pages through a book and your cartoon character goes along. And it's connecting these higher dimensions between your space time and the physical dimension of state that you're in as well. Wow. All right. Yes. We'll definitely have to tackle that on the, on a, a future chat because yeah, that gets quite deep. But just what, with what you're saying, it sounds like the ancient world and, and all this tech, it was more based on looking at the small and, and reproducing that rather than what we're sort of told looking at the big and shrinking it down. And it seems like they were coming the other way. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, and that they had this understanding of this geometric dimension of shapes and that all the sacred geometry really is, is coded frequencies and information of how they calculated it. It's like an analog version of these symbols of mathematics and higher knowledge that the universe just works off of. And it's been completely overlooked and ignored by modern academia. But once you fully grasp it or for anyone that's able to go within and connect their consciousness to the universal field then they're able to resonate with it and get it as well and that, that's why so many people can come back out of that realm grasping different pieces of it and images and these sacred geometrical images and shapes and whatnot but not fully understanding the full knowledge of it and what it truly it, it's like a, it's just the code of the universe it's it, it, yeah. whatever creator created the system it's how it operates it's almost like the babylon story you know confounded their languages but not not verbal languages we don't understand the language of the universe now how it's talking to us exactly right it, and it is a language we've divided all of these frequencies in our technology into all these little ones where the ancients they had larger whole frequencies of consciousness that, you know, they tr connected through and traveled through telekinesis and through uh, astral projection and whatnot. And that it's the waves of spiritual energy and conscious energy, as opposed to this digital bombardment of microwaves that we have everywhere. That's why it's so much harder for the average person in the city jungle to be able to read auras or see auras or see these different energies or focus back in on themselves. Or why so many people literally go insane because they're hearing the noises in their brains and it the hummings and everything right where it's not natural because we are actually a radio receiver like our brain is mm. this conscious radio thought receiver spiritual receiver and the the system the powers that have be have done the best they can to get us to ignore our nor our true spiritual intuitions and selves mm. and, and all this this tech it, it kind of is like you know spiritual kind of tech isn't it it's all connected with the same force that, that makes us and working in unison rather than, um, you know, trying to be the new conquerors of nature, which is obviously what the powers that want to exactly, be. You know, right? want to, yeah. If you can resonate with nature and see how the universe operates, you're going to have a lot more success operating with the flow of things as opposed to just trying to tear it all down and build up from the beginning by burning everything and, it just doesn't make sense at all. No, well, I mean, clearly, you know, it's it's an agenda to keep us away from this tech, you know, from this knowledge, from, you know, empowering ourselves. But uh, luckily, you know, we're where we are now. Lots of people are waking up to it all, aren't they? So Exactly. It's a whole new world of <coughs> reality. And, uh, and this yeah. is the tech we're going to be using by the looks of it. Years is uh, never ever only drink the water that comes from the white, never from the brown, or from uh, anything like this with the green.
green, which is oxidized, because that is no longer monoatomic. That is now a particle where it has combined. So like the red or the green, blues, those have combined particles now where it will slice your body and kill you, do damage as opposed to heal you and help you. So is it is that like what they would call radiation? Um, no, that's not radiation. That's just normal chemistry of the metal oxidizing. It's just, oh, okay. It's just to toxicity, basically. It, exactly. And that's where everybody gets their heavy metal poisoning from is by drinking the oxidized particles, which aren't a plasma state. Those are solid state particles. Okay. On a nano one particle basis, it's that they form covalent bonds with other molecules being oxygen with the oxidized metals. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's how you turn blue and die. Cool. So, um, and we'll, yeah, uh, we'll have to do another show and sort of maybe show how you do separate and filter. But yeah, if you, if you are making this, um, only drink the, so basically if the, if it's white, um, it's, it's several good. Times before where you get all the salt out of the water and, uh, everything else, the particles rinse out and then you let it sit for a day each time before rinsing it, where it goes to the bottom. And even once you have the water fully rinsed, you always want to make sure that all the particles are well settled at the bottom and you never drink the particles themselves. So just the top of the water. How do you how do you rinse water? Do you mean like running it through like a like a cloth? So, so what I do, what you'll do is see the particles are all at the bottom once it stops. Yeah. You pour out this top portion of water, which okay. will contain the salt. Oh, okay. You keep the bottom stuff at the bottom, then you fill it up, at which point it will look like that. And then you just let it settle, and you'll, you'll see as a few minutes go on, it'll settle down. And yeah, usually wait about a day before drinking it each time you refill it once it's fully uh, been rinsed properly all right so once it settles then you can drink the, the clear stuff and then you can refill it and use it nine times or something your oil waters awesome, yeah brother. we'll set up another one and then um maybe even set something up with michelle at some point for sure and then uh, i'm also going to be uh doing a collab here with paul cook pretty soon ah nice i've just uh, i'm just setting one up with him now actually Awesome. He's Tell a my great guy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, as well, another great channel worth checking out. He's just started out. He's only got a thousand seventeen hundred, but uh, Olaf the Sverker. Yep. Very very good stuff with uh, the just showing all the five hundred year old Slavic calendar that he's found, as well as some oh, okay. of the research in Siberia megaliths. And then uh, the giant walls through Ukraine and Russia with all the star forts along them. He, he's oh, done a lot of good work lately. I oh, highly I've, yeah, I've seen him in the past, but I don't think he's popped up. Awesome. All right. Well, nice to meet you. Nice to talk to you. And I'll, yeah, I'll get this sorted out. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll make a date. And maybe next week we can hook up again and do a part two. Sounds good, Campbell. Much That's love, good. my friend. Awesome. You too, man. Have an awesome day. You too, brother. Talk soon. Bye. See ya. So it's like literally, the, what are they going to do? Cut off one third of the country's income? And then they can't. And Justin Trudeau, he just got the finance minister to start working on a uh, basic income plan to put through. Yeah, so I knew this was coming, universal basic income. They want everyone to be sitting on their butts and, you know, feeding their face with sugar and not questioning it. It's not questioning anything. And and they probably only plan to do it for a generation too because those will all be the people that will just get cold. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, but this is a thing. Like We know people will be running to that going, oh, my God, this is awesome. I don't have to do anything. Right? Like, uh, do you read Zero Hinge? No, what's that?
Uh, it's a really good actual economic uh, website, like news site in the States. Oh, yeah. But uh, it's completely independent. Like they get blocked on Twitter all the time and stuff. But um, it, it's well respected and it's like an alternative platform. Um, but yeah, just yesterday they had a post about how uh, in Florida they're having to pay $50 at McDonald's just to have people come in for interviews. <laughs> because of. Is that also because of basic incomes? Yeah, no, because no, of the no basic income COVID payments. No one wants to work. Well, that's going to go well, isn't it? Yeah, it's a whole new world. Holy dolly. And, and I mean, you know, what's going to come after this, right? Oh, it's too expensive. We can't get humans. Oh, robots, AI, anyone? Right. But yeah, uh, who, who knows? Who knows? Yeah, exactly. I, I think they're falling apart anyway. I don't. I mean, I think the whole thing was kind of like a last ditch effort, and they kind of knew that they they were done. But they thought, bugger it, let's let's try and get as many zombies as we can. You know, bring down their vibration. And if we can't, then we'll just ca cause as much mayhem as is you know possible. Um, right, just, like just, just to make it harder. <laughs> And I can't believe they managed to get Biden in. My God. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I, yeah, I, I kind of can't believe that there hasn't been more of an uproar in the US. And, right. You know, like, I was expecting 100,000, you know, gun owners to surround the White House and say, out you go. I know. I, my mind is blown that they, they... But, I mean, this is the thing. Everyone's also still relying on on trump and the army and all this isn't it number 17 like so many people are still waiting for someone else to come and fix the problem yeah exactly rather than getting off their butt and doing something and this universal income will just make that worse right where oh i know just every nobody's protesting but if they try to get the war in uh Russia and Ukraine, my God. Yeah, well, and that's the reason they had to do it because Trump wasn't going to get into wars. So, you know, he stuffed up their agenda a bit. But, or, you know, nor was he part of the agenda. We just really don't know, do we? You know, he could be there. No, to, he, he could be part of this thing that, you know, so that people hope he's going to come back and so they do nothing. But it's a brave new world, and I'm looking forward to this uh, disclosure engine. Disclosure engine? The disclosure in June. Oh. The UFO community is really hyping it up. Yeah, yeah, Project Blue Beam. <laughs> we will see what happens. It's, yeah, well, it, the narrative's coming out everywhere. The, um, you know, governments are releasing stuff and they have been really for the last couple of years, you know, with the whole, what was the Canadian, wasn't it? The Canadian, what was he, Minister of Defence or something? Ex-Minister uh, of Defence. Well, yeah. yeah, came out with it and said he had all these doc documents and stuff. And Yeah. I just want yeah. one of them to land. It's it. that, uh, in the US, they have it in June in the funding there. They have to do a major UFO disclosure in June through the Pentagon. It's up to us to shape it.